good Hearthstone pro either. But he's a, a wonderful team manager, I've heard. So, CJ versus Spenu. Picks and bans a Lulu band out against Spenu. And you would, by looking at the picks that Spenu has had over the last uh, few matches, it, it seems like it's fairly easy to ban these guys out. The Lulu against Sasan seems very logical. Uh, yeah, and that may force him into some awkward picks here. Yeah. Depending on what he's going to play. I mean, he's known LeBlanc, Cassidy, and TF. Obviously, his Lulu and Fizz have come out as well. Cassiopeia, the first ban against CJ, and then the Sejuani ban against Spenu. And Callista, yeah. You don't want to let Space or really any other AD carry have that champion right now. Kind of a must ban on the red side for the most part. Yeah, the Sejuani ban is a little bit surprising just because Catch yeah. has played four different champions so far. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, he really hasn't shown any sort of, uh, well, at least not in professional matches we've seen, any sort of partiality to a specific jungle champ right now. And I feel like if you want to take one out, if you just want to pick one, I feel like picking Gragas is better than Sejuani right now. But I don't know, CJ feeling more comfortable banning out the Sejuani. The Maokai as well banned against his soul. Yeah, has picked that up in a couple of his games. Maybe wanting to put him on a more squishy or carry-oriented top laner like his Rumble or his Kennen. Right. Will we see the Gragas ban last? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, Ambition has had some pretty fantastic games on Gragas, and there Azir it is. is yep. maybe the first pick now. Yeah. Most teams like to deal with that Azir in the ban phase instead of letting it through to CJ. Of course, we saw the Coco's skill on it in the final game versus KT when he was able to push the Hecarim and the Evelyn out of his back line to keep space on Jinx alive. LeBlanc also available if he's more confident in that pickup. Well, either way, those are two very strong mid lane picks for Coco. Sasin did play Fizz into Azir the last time he was faced with that matchup. Yeah, I say you go with the LeBlanc here. I think it's a little bit safer. And it's a champion with, that you can really snowball hard on weaker teams, too. Uh, but they may just take the Thresh. Okay, so really prioritizing that Thresh for Mad Life. And this has been something that CJ has been doing for a while now. And so far it's paid off. You know, Mad Life has had a lot of great games. <laughs> Relly and Jin Zhao. Uh, now, the Relly wouldn't surprise me too much. Jin Zhao would. I think we're going to see that get changed. I'm very surprised that they wanted to take the first pick Thresh here. But with both LeBlanc and Azir available, Coco will be getting one of his best champions. Yeah, true. And CJ's done that, too. They've done that a lot, actually. The first pick Thresh for Mad Life. Really wanting him on that champion. I just want to see Bard, Monty. Bard is available. I wonder if play Ambition is going to play Nunu this game. They Because they could build a composition with this Thresh. Very similar to comps that they've run in the past. Jinx, Nunu, Azir uh, is probably likely with the current jungle bans, considering that Catch seems to want to take Rek'Sai. Ambition is going to be choosing between Nunu and Lee Sin as the Alistair comes down. So first time we'll see Secret on something that isn't Nautilus. All right. Ambition mulling over his jungle choices. Could go at that Nunu. We've seen him play quite a bit of that. You know, do you feel like uh, the jungle Nidalee is a possibility too now with the nerfs of Cinderhulker? Is that just kind of gone at the moment? Well, China still seems to like it, but I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if that's the most efficient way to play the game right now. She does take a while to kick into gear in the late game because she needs a lot of mana and AP to poke effectively. So she kind of has a mid-game power drop where she doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, may grab that vein for space as well, too. They're going to take Nunu. They really want the Azir here. So unless Sasin is going to take the Azir away right now, or they have an answer for it. Hmm. Yeah, I think, you just take, I think you take Rumble here and then wait to see one of the other lanes before you commit to which champions you're going to be trying to buff with this Nunu. That makes sense. Could be Jinx Azir. Could be Vayne Azir. Now, what if what if Spenu just takes a Zir Vayne right now? Uh, possibility for sure. The Vayne Alistair lane is very good. And we could see the new Ash also. That has been played over in Europe on 5.9. But how much would that hurt CJ uh, CJ's Nunu if they took those champs away? Uh, I mean, you, you still have Jinx or something to deal with. But yeah, the, Azir, the Azir may be a blow. 
And Azir is generally a pretty safe champion these days, something that is blind pickable. Very true. Well, I'd love to see the new Ash. I mean, it seems like the changes have worked out very, very well. Getting a lot of good reviews from the Korean pros we've talked to. And they're going to be going more all in, it would appear. So Sivir yeah. will be the choice alongside a blind pick. Well, they picked Rumble, but that is... I'm not a big fan of Aurelia these days in general. Hey, maybe it's a support Aurelia and a top Alistar. You never know, right? I guess you don't. <laughs> you never know. Well, I don't see Tucson in this game, though, so it probably is a top Aurelia. So the final two picks for CJ. And we'll see what they decide to go with. I suppose if they're feeling a little bit worried about the all-in, they could switch to more of a poke-style team. They do have the Rumble. The Nunu wouldn't work as well, but it looks like they may go with Vayne Azir. I think you I go like with Azir. If they have Sivir yeah. and Aurelia, you'll be able to knock them out with your ultimate. As for what AD carry, if it's going to be Vayne, you may want a bit more mobility and CC up against this Aurelia just to push her back at the very least with the Condemn when she tries to go in or the Alistar. Do you think Lucian might be a safer pick than the Vayne here? Yeah, Lucian would be fine too, but they may want... I mean, they really like putting space on Vayne these days. Yeah, they do, and looks like they will again. And the Azir for Coco. So a lot of uh, strong blood boil targets. Yeah, pretty easy composition to predict from CJ. Yeah. I like the Rumble though, always just having that strength in the mid game to get yourself over the hump and late. Now again, Sasson did play Fizz into the last Azir that he faced on Samsung. Wouldn't be too surprising to see something like that. Doubt we'll see the Blitzcrank locked in. You never know. You never know, Monty. Could be an AP Blitz mid. You know, pull his ear right out of there. Uh, AP Blitz has great ratios. Yes, he does. He was tons of fun to play in Earth mode. Sassen, uh, Sassen is known as a LeBlanc player in solo queue and a Kassadin player. Kassadin is probably the safest choice here, considering that LeBlanc cannot go through the Azir wall. Yeah. Well, she can blink back over it, but she it's a distort. dash. It's a dash on the dis first distort, but when you distort backwards, it's a blink. Right. So you can't go through it if you're trying to distort into it, but you can hop back over if you're already there. Yeah. So you can go in fairly safely. Well, if you don't get bounced back by it while you're going in, yes. Right, right. So that'll be it. So Sassen will have his first game on LeBlanc professionally. Exciting times, only playing Lulu and Fizz up until this point. Yeah, true enough. But the uh, the big question for me is, how is Souls Aurelia going to work out? Uh, just in general, the Aurelias that we've seen in any position in Korea haven't been the greatest. And with a champion like Azir pushing people back, with uh, champions like Nunu, Rumble slowing, it's I think Soul's going to have a ridiculously hard time getting in to do anything. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm just not a fan of champions that have to have a lead in order to be effective, yeah. and that's kind of where I feel Aurelia is right now. She's incredibly item dependent, and if she gets shut down early, or if she doesn't get enough of an advantage early, she just can't do anything in the mid and late game. So, Soul has got a lot here on his plate, I think. Yeah, I think the lanes are going to be kind of tough either way, if he gets a 2v1 or the 1v1. It's not going to be easy. Well, here we go. Spenu, they knew it wasn't going to be easy coming into it, but they're trying out some new things. Can they take out CJ? Let's get in the game and find out. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ Entis versus Spenu Sonic Boom. A couple fans. There's a couple Spenu fans out there. They like the shoes. I've heard. Have you heard that, Doa? I've heard that they like the shoes. I think you're just making things up. Maybe they just like esports. Maybe they just have that passion. Pretty sure you haven't talked to any of them. Yep. Well, just guessing. Great, great story. Yeah. That's Noah here, a great journalist, putting words into people's mouths. Hey. And there is Helios. It is. Well, dodge out of the way. <laughs> Looked like they were going to dive onto the floor or something. Yep, Helios, back from NA. 
He's concluded his NA adventure for the moment. Yep, seems that way. Good one. Crowd laughed a lot of that one. <laughs> <laughs> he has concluded his NA adventure, hasn't he? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Didn't go too well. Nope, not really. Helios' oh, NA experiment? Not well, the most successful. You know, it's tough. I mean, it's anyone who's moved abroad for a job knows that it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be challenging. It's not for everybody. Whether you're a League of Legends player or any job you have. All right, so lane swap will be coming in. Vayne Thresh up in the top side will not be matched in the bottom lane. And there is a very dark Aurelia skin. With Batman Aurelia. Batman Aurelia with... Back what? I, don't, I think that's actually infringing on some copyright, so Riot can't technically t call it that. Oh, we? well, we'll call it Daredevil Aurelia. Then. <laughs> okay. So I, I get that she's got the floating sword, but I don't get like what the floating thing above her head is, though. Yeah, I don't know either. It seems like if she's using telekinesis to hold that up, it would be even more challenging just to have a floating crown. I don't get it. She's got mental ability to spare. So she can use it with uh, flashy jewelry. Oh, here comes Coco. Just getting a little bit of vision. Spotting where Catch and the top lane follow are right now. And Coco, the last time I saw him play this matchup, was in game five against Faker versus SK Telecom. And Coco's Azir did really well early. Yeah. He got a lot of damage down onto Faker's LeBlanc. Faker ended up taking over that game. But at least in the beginning, Coco had a solid idea of how to play it. Mm -hmm. And was quite aggressive. Well, certainly seems to be no slouch on this champion, that's for sure. Well, that's why we pretty much always see it banned against him. Yeah. Wow, Space really getting a pretty ideal situation, getting to just freeze that top lane and farm to his heart's content. That is certainly what you want a Vayne to be able to do. Yep. And set it up early on. Meanwhile, Secret here, Shy not really committing right now. He's going to try and farm with his harpoons as best as he can. Bad life now, coming down to the bottom side, is seen by a ward in the tri brush. Yep, just gonna help out Shy a little bit. Keep him safe. And that ward really helped out uh, CJ's lane swap right there, because as soon as they saw them starting red and then going to Raptors, Shy was immediately able to walk into lane and right. start farming immediately. So that actually has put him in a really good position at a level up, as well as having that CS advantage. Yeah, so Sol immediately trying to push this lane up as much as he can, just to break that freeze and make it a bit tougher for space. Yeah, but look at the pathing from Ambition. He's already on the top side. Hmm. And this is gonna be Sol relatively overextended right now as Ambition goes for the Scuttle Crab. One more hit, no, nope, not there even. There's the red burn. Yeah, so. We'll see how aggressive Ambition wants to be in this top lane. I suppose if you're trying to prevent Vayne from just free farming well, like that, that does leave you open to some ganks, and Ambition looks like he's going to be going for one. Yeah, there is a ward there, however. Yeah. And this is great pathing from Ambition. He knew there was oh, no way that Rek'Sai could be there. Coming in, we'll see what he can get. A dash from Sol will uh, get him out. No summoners needing to be used, but it does give Ambition, or uh, Space rather, a little bit of breathing room anyway. It was a nice attempt, and sure. Ambition, because of that early ward, had information about where the enemy jungler would be, so he got some wards in of his own, playing this very safely. Oh, but Pulverize getting a little bit of damage into Shy, but Madlife gets a death sentence. There's a flay on the secret as well, and that trade going very well for CJ. Man, in the mid lane, things not going as well for CJ, though. Sasin, 13, 12 CS up on Coco right now. A little early lead for that LeBlanc. I haven't seen a lot of that lane, but it just looks like sauson has been farming a little bit better. Yeah, surprising, because Coco was so aggressive against Faker, and now really hurting in terms of CS early on. So playing a little bit more passively. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder. Ambition right oh, now, finding battle. catch in his jungle. Everybody wants the Raptors. Yeah, Catch not going to stick around, however. Nah, it's a little bit dangerous with uh, Coco able to come down. The lane was pushing back towards LeBlanc, so I think Catch knew it was a little bit risky to go after that one. And Shy really starting to pull ahead in terms of crowd control, or yeah. uh, CS oh. rather, on his side. And Long range there we go. snowball. 
the world's longest snowball. There we go. So with that wave pushing in, Coco just about evens things up. So it looks like the differential just as a result of the tides of lane pressure. But that's not the case at the bottom side, mm. where Shy's early entrance into lane has really helped him out. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I don't really play a lot of mid lane, so I'm not terribly familiar with the Azir LeBlanc matchup, but I wonder if there is a certain level of one of your abilities that lets you start to kind of put the pressure back on the LeBlanc. <laughs> well, what's going on? Space? Everyone immediately looks, looks at space. It's like, space, did you go before we started? <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you guys don't remember, the last time space paused was in game three versus KT, where he had to have emergency bathroom time. <laughs> And, and this was like 30 seconds before the game ended. That's game not an three. exaggeration either. It was like literally 30 <laughs> seconds. It was less than a minute before they ended the game, and Space just couldn't wait that long. Had to go. Well, looks like it's something different this time. I thought there couldn't be any explosions in Space, but I guess they were wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is... Oh. We had a, you know, we had a whole bunch of like space bathroom jokes after the broadcast that we were saying to each other. There's just too many to fit in <laughs> during the broadcast. It's all right. I got another chance. It's true. He's just trying to stall things out. Get it? <laughs> stall like like a like a stall in the bathroom. <laughs> ah, you see what I'm? See what I, I'm doing? I got no. it before you ruined it's it. Not. Uh, yeah. I got it before you ruined it. No. Though. I just I had to explain it. You know. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you chose to explain it. <laughs> Well, luckily, Space's lane and Bladder are both under control right now, and we can get back into the game. What a relief. You know, Coco's missing a lot of CS with these uh, Sand Soldiers, actually. He missed all three in that last little area. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty not great CSing. Sol really having a hard time getting an angle on this minion wave right now. He's getting denied a lot by the turret. Ambition also there, just trying to protect space on the top side. Now, Spenu wants to go for this dragon as a result. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think CJ can do a whole lot. Well, maybe know. they this, can, actually. This dragon does a lot more yeah. damage early than it used to. I keep forgetting that, yeah. It really does, too. I mean, when you see the effect it has when you get those little early three-man dragons at this time in the game. It's much harder. I mean, it doesn't take much more than a support in a top laner to scare you away. Wow, Coco taking a lot of damage there. You know, if Sassan had popped that Ignite, he might have been able to get first blood there. Well, it was a barrier, so. Ah, you're right. Still would have been difficult. Ambition on the top side. No dragon actually ends up being taken. That life just... Walks right back into bottom to continue helping Shy develop this enormous CS lead that he has at the moment. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, things going pretty well for CJ across the board aside from that mid lane. And Coco's staying relatively even. He's down more than you would imagine he would be, but it's not the end of the world just yet. No, he'll catch up on this wave as well. Yeah, he should. And it's not like there's a big item disparity that's developed either with right. such a small number of CS as the differential. Yep. Yeah, so, so far, more farming. I feel like we're in a, we're in a very farming-heavy meta right now here in Korea. Well, it's what happens when one team likes to pick Vayne and Jinx so much like we've seen. They One team is really wanting to play passively and farm into that late game. Yep. Pretty much. Madlife getting a little bit of CS now, which he will undoubtedly turn into some sick AD items. I like my Blade of the Ruined King on Thresh. That's right. It's pretty great. There's nothing more hilarious than fast attack speed on Thresh. The Trinity Thresh. Get, some, get a Phantom Dancer on Thresh. Get the thresh. Phantom Dancer yeah. afterwards, because that way he just thrashes his chain around wildly in the <laughs> air. It's very That's funny. true. You, go, uh, you start Static Ship for the Wave Clear, right? And then you go Phantom Dancer, Runins. No. Blade. Phantom Dancer, Blade. Yep. <laughs> Oh, Sassen scaring Coco away. You know, when we were in the booth with CJ, Coco wasn't there. If he would have been, I would have shown him the I'm in love with the Coco music video. Maybe he already knows about it, Doa. I don't know. I bet he hasn't seen it yet. He needs to He needs to be made aware of that. I agree. He needs to know why people are in love with him. <laughs> I, I would have liked to have seen you try to explain it to him. 
It would have been great. I can do that. My green's good enough. I can handle it. I can like point and say words. <laughs> this mid lane is heating up. Is it? No, not really. No, CJ really <laughs> likes to play passively in the yes. early game. They, yes, they this do. is a team that really relies on the team fighting. They like just to group up and fight as a unit. They haven't had too many dominant early games. They really snowball. They're very patient, methodical. Nope, oh, and no dragon for CJ either. Ambition taking a little bit too much damage from that. A dragon is Do you feel like dragons become a little bit too hard to take early now? No. I, I, no? I The teams here are just trying it a little bit in a risky fashion. Uh, I mean, Spenu, wow, Coco ooh. went in right there. Yeah, that was a Sasa bit. And dodged ooh, his all that was in. a bad idea. Catch coming in. Coco not using that barrier yet, but just using the Emperor's Divide to keep people away. Finally having to pop that barrier when the Prey Seeker comes in from catch. Yeah, just popping the barrier early so that the distortion couldn't come in to follow up if it was still. Right ready to be used and he does get out of there but has to burn both of his summoners to do so ignite still up on sasen yeah, so coco overestimating the amount of damage he could do there in a 1v1 it looks like and that is not going to help his cs situation at all either nope well he's got his morello namicon now though so well cs situation had pretty oh. much evened up by the time he went back right there yeah it's not that big of a deal any longer CS situation in the top lane is a bit of a different story. The fact that Space is actually ahead in CS2 is fantastic for him. Yep. That's what you want with the vein. So Ambition starts that Dragon again, and then gives up. Oh. Is he giving up? I don't know. I don't I think guess he not. is. No, just pulling it out of the pit. Wow, they can't see it with that ward right there, so pulling it right around huh. the edge. They should have had a glimpse of it exiting yeah. the pit. I feel like they should have seen it for just a moment, but doesn't matter, Dragon but taken by CJ. if they were looking right at it, they wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, it would have been just a tiny blip on the minimap, if anything. Uh, it would have been anything. The blip on the minimap doesn't move with the dragon when it's right. being taken, so. Well, I was just wondering if they maybe cut the edge of Ambition's portrait for just a split second yeah, or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But it certainly didn't look like he was doing that dragon, so a fortuitous ward for CJ allows them to sneak that one out. Yep. A good lesson for all of us, to make sure your wards can see what you need them to see. Wow, Couch actually using a Prey Seeker right there when I don't think he would have been seen otherwise, so letting CJ know where he was on the map pings immediately. That's a bit of an error right there. If you, the longer you can stay hidden and mysterious as a jungler, the better it is. So trying to hit someone with a long-range Prey Seeker isn't worth the knowledge that you give mm -hmm. of your position. Well, Mad Life coming up along with Ambition. We'll see if they can make a play on to Sassen. Sassen with no flash uses that distortion. But Ambition just showing himself in the mid lane. Looks like they're just getting a little bit more vision. Yeah, Mad Life warding blue right now. And they should be able to get that pink ward. One more hit. Ambition sticking around. Oh, he doesn't get it. Has to run away. Yeah, Sassen's right there. Coco recalling. He's like, good luck, dude. <laughs> Bye. Mad Life was there as well, so Ambition had <laughs> plenty of backup. Obviously, Coco could have canceled that recall at any time if he had so chosen. Now Ambition just going to take the Scuttle Crab. Ambition been dominating crab control as expected on Nunu. Yeah. Get sort of a ward while he's in that mid lane as well. Space is falling back to the safety of the Krugs just to keep on farming up. Has that Blade of the Ruined King now. So hit his first core item. In the meantime, Nuclear just delaying it a tad bit to get some extra gold off the Avarice Blade. Yeah, space in pretty good shape right now. And with that first dragon taken too, we're probably just gonna continue to see kind of more passive play from these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this is a very similar composition to the one that CJ ran against KT with that Azir hyper carry combo. They've shown that they really do a good job of protecting Vayne and the rest of the back line. Coco can eject any aggressors that happen to come in. And Soul here. Oh, shy having to flash to get out of that possible gank from Spenu. Bummer. Can't even kill the tunnel. He's no. too afraid. He probably could have. I mean, because Rek'Sai can't come back through it that soon. Didn't want to get stunned. Yeah. 
It's only a stun. And catch is going to be seen going into the enemy jungle. Yeah, there's so many wards on the top side right now. This is actually really dangerous. He could be collapsed on here by any number of people. He doesn't see anyone with his tremor sense at the moment until Shy beats a retreat into the tri brush, but he's gonna see that tunnel, so they'll know exactly where he was moments before. Yeah, pretty much. We've got the 2v2 down in bot now. Coco, looks like he went ahead and took the Rift Scuttler. Ambition there as well too, brought in with the Lantern. Secret could be in a bit of trouble here, getting low. There's a flash death sentence, misses because of it. Looks like for now, Secret escapes, so no first blood or CJ out of that gank, but it was pretty close. Yeah, very close, and especially with Vayne, you have to be careful. Vayne against that Alistar, where she is normally so, ta or he is normally so tanky in the early game, rather, with those Silver Bolt procs and the true damage, you can get cut down through that ultimate. Yep, well, gonna... they grab catch. They should be able to get away. Ambition tried to get in and consume that blue buff too, but Sassen was able to take it before that happened. So close call for Spenu, as you definitely don't want to lose that blue buff early on. Yeah, long time before first blood in this game. No one really wanted to commit. Catch, though, on the more early game focused jungler in terms of ganking, and he hasn't really made many plays yet, mostly just been farming. Yeah, pretty much. And Ambitions showed up a couple times, but for the most part, just farming as well. And that's why they're pretty even in CS. So Shy gonna go for a more peel-oriented rumble build this game. Got the arm guard just for that protection in lane and is now going to be building into a pretty early Rylai's just for more peel. And that makes sense. They have a Nunu with a vein in his ear. They don't really need damage in the late game. And rumble scaling in the mid game is perfectly acceptable for outputting damage even without a lot of items, as long as he has a, just a little bit of magic penetration. Oh. So I like this adaptation. Are we going to see a bit of a dive here? Maybe. Ambition might just be going ahead and taking some of the jungle from Spenu. Yeah, not going to dive that. All right, well, 40 seconds until Dragon's up. CJ getting a lot of wards down there in pretty good position for it right now. And if Space can get some poking in onto Nuclear, that would help quite a bit. Yeah, it's difficult to poke out, though, at the current time with the Alistair and Lane and Madlife trying to set up wards. So should be see if Coco can make something work in terms of setting up some sandstorms. Whoa, wow. all in in the top lane. Soul popping that ultimate. Shy has to back off for just a moment. And looks like both players are going to take a lot of damage. Oh, Soul going in again. Gets a slow on to Shy with that Equilibrium Strike, but not able to kill him just yet. Yeah, that Arm Guard helping out quite a bit. I mean, between the Arm Guard and the uh, Giant's Belt, Shy is pretty tanky against the Sorelia. Looks like CJ might have to give this Dragon up. We'll see. I we'll see if they try to fight it. If they will, actually. They have the Nunu with the Consume and the Here's the Teleport coming in. Uh, CJ Shy's Teleport much, much later. Soul comes in. Dragon was taken by Spenu. Ambition a little bit on his own right now. Box pop by Madlife just to kind of zone out the Spenu plays a little bit. Coco trying to come from behind. No choke points yet. Catching a lot of it. Trouble space. Able to get first blood out of that fight. So they give up the Dragon, but they do get first blood on their vein, which is pretty big. And we'll see if they can maybe transition this into a turret kill too. It's so low, they probably can. Yeah, and the Sivir's not there for yeah. the wave clear. So really early, or really easy rather, first turret. Yeah, definitely not early. <laughs> and there we go. Oh, condemning nice us to condemn. wall. Saucin, yeah, space making plays, tumbling out. Soul gets the kill though, onto Shy. Shy getting a little bit too close. Secret got really low in that fight, but I'm surprised Coco escaped. didn't use his passive to actually get the turret behind him again. It was the first time he's had an opportunity to use that. And they could have set up a much better siege, and Shy may not have died if they had that backup from the tower just to fall back to for every wave. So That's a good point. Bit of weird play right there. They have a chance just to group and use it again, but that was an excellent opportunity to use the Azir Tower and they decided not to do it. So tower and a kill for CJ Tower, or kill and a dragon rather, for Spenu. That's right. Space has been able to get his second core item now as well too, got that static shiv, so he's uh, still a little bit ahead of nuclear in terms of items anyway. Yeah. But now the Aurelia 
as that Trinity Force did get the kill onto that champion, which is where you don't really want it. Yeah. If you're CJ, just want to oh. shut that down. Impossible. Spirit taking oh, a lot nice of place. Uh, dead. Wow, Secret just taken out by Space and Mad Life. Great play by Mad Life. Get that death sentence right into the flay. Secret not even using any of his, any of his summoners to escape, and he didn't have his ults. He so. didn't have time to use his summoners, I'm pretty sure, right there. He was burst down so quickly. Yeah, between the CC from Thresh and the Condemn from Vayne, I don't think he had a lot of chances to make anything work there. I don't know about this catch. Sasin is moving down towards that side, but there was a lot of reinforcements coming in. A lot of people on Mad Life right now, but look at Space making the plays, getting a kill on catch. Sasin comes in, though, equalizes with the one on the Thresh. Space, look at this though. Does he go after the right one? Wow. He does. Double kill onto Space, and he is not done yet. Coco coming over oh, the wall. Whoa. Nice play, Emperor's Divide. Throws Nuclear back away from the turret a little bit. I think Nuclear's in a bit of trouble. Nunu's like, I got this, guys. Don't worry. And CJ, three kills out of that little skirmish, and they may be able to get the bot lane turret. They will. Those were some sexy Azir mechanics no, coming in kidding. from Coco going all the way from the river into the tower to push uh, Nuclear back and contain him right there. Yeah, just As well the... as the boldness from Space, a player who made his reputation on being quite passive, but very confidently going in for those kills and racking them up right there. 2,200 gold after he picks up, what, four kills? Uh, I believe it was three there but that was certainly one of the most mechanical plays I think we've ever seen Space make. Just buying that Quicksilver Sash, keeping himself a little bit safer, I suppose. Yeah, that was a, that was a questionable gank, even with that LeBlanc coming, because if you looked at the mid lane, Azir and Nunu were already running in that direction, so Mad Life actually wasn't particularly unsafe, and I mean, he died, but there was so much backup coming through. Now this 5-0-0 zero, zero vein has to be dealt with. Well, <laughs> Samsung hiding, hiding in a brush, but it looks like some of them are going to recall anyway. I don't think Space is going to give them the opportunity. Oh, or coming up. I don't know if there. they can kill <laughs> They can't <laughs> win this. Yeah, they're just going to run. Space is going to do a lot of damage. That's a snowball onto Secret. Secret in a little bit of trouble, getting condemned back. Meanwhile, Soul tries to come in and make a play. Secret just pushing Space away, but that's going to mean that he will go down to this vein. Coco comes in for the kill instead, though. Space doing most of the work, but it's all about getting this top turret, and that's all three outer turrets down now in favor of CJ. And they're still pushing in, too. Not catching Sasin. That was a blind hook for the LeBlanc. Catch still there. Yeah. Oh. Space not following that one in, but it looks like they'll be able to do more damage to that tier two. Sawson trying to find a chance to come over a wall and do some damage, but he just, I don't think he has the items yet to really just burst someone like that. Well, he got some magic resistance, and he does, he does have some magic penetration, but Space with that QSS does make it a little bit harder. Ambition, though, uh -oh. has to flash out. Well, if, I think if Ignite had been used, well, he probably could have consumed, consumed the small Krug. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, getting pretty low. A little bit of damage to that top tier, too. Shy, meanwhile, kept the lane pushed up and bot. Yeah, Ambition was going for the Frozen Heart first, actually. Just because there's an Aurelia and a Sivir on the other team, so without the locket, this LeBlanc is going to be dealing some pretty decent damage until MR is purchased. No one with any MR right now. So there are a lot of targets for Sasin. But the vein already, the early QSS by thanks to the wealth of kills that Space got early on. Yep, that's right. Oh, more action. Coco misses his ult. And Sasan able to get out with that second part of distortion. And it looks like they may just dive Space here. We'll see if he's able to maneuver his way out of this one. Yep, looks like he won't even need to. Coco got poked out pretty hard. He's going to go back. Well, teleport coming in from Shy. Plays being made here. There's the equalizer. Doesn't catch nuclear that much. The ult still keeps him fast, but he's taking a lot of damage from this rumble. Ambition helps pick up that kill with the snowball. Meanwhile, Secret just trapped on his own 1v4. That's another kill for Space now. And Spenu just kind of falling apart at this point. CJ is kind of has a run of the map. Nice hook onto Sasin going in with that flay. And that was a blind can he get hook. out? 
And Mad Life deservingly gets the killing blow there. That was a blind hook on the Sassen. So that, <laughs> nothing in that brush to really let Mad Life know that he was in there. Just intuition manages to land it, follows it through, and now a 24 minute Baron for CJ after a long period of farming this game. And everything looking so even all of a sudden CJ just breaking out into an 8K gold lead. Yeah, that was like an 8K gold lead built up in the space of like three minutes or something like that too. It was well, it's just so fast. punishing. CJ saw that moment of weakness in the bottom side and got a billion kills onto their vein. Yep, pretty much. And now they can kind of take whatever they want very, very quickly. Anyone want to take the lantern? There we go. Tumble right into it. All right. And then use that empowered recall. After Space gets this red buff, and they'll set up for a pretty amazing siege with this Baron up Azir. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's a situation too where if you're saucing on that LeBlanc, you really can't go in on it because you're going to get snowballed. You're going to get maybe condemned into a wall by Space. So you can get a lot closer to the turret than you normally could with this CJ comp, I feel. Yeah, and nuclear, I look at how far behind he is. Two full core items at 25 minutes. Space is just massively fed. Yeah. Uh, checking that brush of the hook. Space just gonna go ahead and walk up. Gonna save the Azir turret. Nope, they're gonna put it up right now. I thought they'd save it for the next siege onto the inhibitor, but they're playing it a little bit more cautiously. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Safe and methodical. Certainly wins games in these situations. Even if I'd like to see it get a bit more exciting. Well, they can just dive these turrets, frankly. They should be tanky enough now. Yeah. They may be saving the dive for the inhibitor. There you go. One more tower down for CJ Entis. Easily clearing this wave with the Azir and the Static Shiv. Yeah, plenty of Baron buff left to work with as well, too. They can stick around here for a while if they want to. Wow, the poke is real. Secret coming in. Nice head, but pulverize. Can they follow up there? Emperor's Divide pushes people back. Soul, though, skirting the edges, comes in, does nothing. CJ winning this fight easily. Mad Life not able to hit that grab like he wanted to. He'll have to back off. Meanwhile, Sassen barely escaping with his life. Can oh. continue to do damage. That was pretty close. There goes the inhibitor turret, and there goes the inhibitor. So CJ with a very successful siege here in mid lane. A couple kills. Turret, inhibitor, can't wow. really ask for much more than that from a Baron buff, can yeah, you? Yeah, just incredibly smooth siege there. Two turrets, inhibitor, and the kills as well. It's been really offering a very little resistance. I mean, their wave clear doesn't exist besides a distortion from LeBlanc, which cuts down the kill threat if she uses it on the minion wave uh, for Vayne just to walk up and start autoing the turret, and then also Boomerang Blade. And we saw Soul try to come into the back of that fight, and this Aurelia just is too squishy. He did zero damage. He didn't re really even get to hit anyone before going down. Well, Coco had a really nice Emperor's Divide right there. He's been using that ultimate so well in their team fights to protect the back line yeah, in the last couple of games. And Nuclear has to be so careful. Yeah, I think it may be too late for being careful. Oh. Space flashing ahead, the tumble. Can he do it? One more, and he gets the kill. Well, things not going well for Spinu at all. Goodbye, he, Secret. Double kill for Spacey. Manages to make it back to that one. Flashed the headbutt on that, seeing it was coming in, and matched the nice. flash as well of his enemy. Nice combo on the Coco, but it's just not going to be enough. Doesn't look like the way. Ambition able to tank turrets all day. Actually, that was a super minion tanking a lot of that as well. And nice catch on the catch. Space doing a lot of damage to him. And Sasin tries to make something happen, but nope, that's not going to work. Goodbye, catch. There we go. A kill for Shy. And pretty textbook from CJ coming out of this one. Why not just do a full channel Nunu ult for celebration? There goes the Nexus, and CJ takes a very smooth game number one. GG. Wow, I was really surprised at how fast CJ was able to put that game out of Spenu's reach. Yeah, it was really like that one mistake in bot lane from Spenu, and CJ just steamrolled them from there on out. Yeah, just continually applying pressure with the vein once the vein was fed perfectly snowballing that game and you know expected comp from CJ Antis they they do like to run these style of compositions with a the new new the Azir and then an 80 hyper carry and they didn't have to show anything new here just went with what they were comfortable with and had some great plays and space 
Well deserving of an MVP that game for sure. Yeah, I would say so. Spates just, I feel like he keeps improving, you know? That's, a, that's the crazy thing is that he was so lackluster for so long